So much to get done in the shop this week. I really want to build a miter saw stand for the new miter saw and make it so that it will latch onto the workbench, similar to how I built the table saw stand, so that the workbench can serve as a place to set wood while I'm cutting it on the miter saw. And then I plan to create a little tabletop on the other side that will pop up into place and then fold down when it's not in use. Because I'm working in a smaller garage space, it's always nice to conserve space where I can. My scrap wood situation is completely out of control right now and just a disaster zone. There's also just lots of little organizational things and cleaning that I need to do before I feel like this workshop will be in a place where I won't have to mess with it for a while. Of course, things will probably pop up here and there, but I would love to just get it to a place where I don't have to do any major work for a little while. My main focus is to finish building a miter saw stand, but there's always other little things to get done in the workshop. Some reorganization of supplies and tools was definitely in order. That took me way longer than it should have just to find the pin, the lockout pin. Too long for me to figure out how to open it, but we're here. I base the general concept of my stand on the collapsible side table ones I see really prevalent here on YouTube from other woodworkers, but I modified my design to fit my purposes better. I sketched it out to ensure that my plans would all come together accurately and made sure what I had in my head would really work out. I wanted this stand to latch onto my workbench so that my workbench could serve as a support on one side and have a collapsible table on the other side that would be an additional support. This meant I would base all the measurements for the stand off of the height of the already constructed workbench top. I started with constructing the boxes that would form the top, the braces, and the pop-up table for the stand before moving on to the legs using two and a half inch screws. I was scheduled to hit 30K today, so I've kind of been checking my YouTube more often than normal um, just to celebrate when it happens. And it just happened. Obviously, um, oh, we just got another one, I think. <laughs> Maybe to some people it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's been really cool. I, I can't believe how quickly this channel has grown. And to me, it seems like a big deal. 
So thank you to every one of you who's been a part of that. It's been a really cool journey building out this YouTube channel. Anyways, that's enough sentimental stuff on my side. Let's get back to the build. All right, I'm gonna keep working while I talk about this video sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN app and browser extension that allows you to place your device anywhere in the world so that you can unblock content that isn't normally available in your area. Also, they offer data encryption as an extra layer of online security that helps keep your passwords, personal info, and location safe. Kyle's already been using Surfshark as his VPN of choice for over three years and really loves it. So I decided to give it a try myself. I really enjoy its online safety and privacy features, but I also really love that it allows me to watch shows that I can't normally get in the US. For example, my favorite show, The Office, isn't available on Netflix in the US, but it is available on Netflix in the UK. Also, the interface is extremely intuitive and easy to navigate. And on top of being really affordable, costing as little as a single cup of coffee a month, Surfshark allows you to use one account on an unlimited amount of devices, which means Augie, Kyle, and myself can all use it on our different devices while only paying for one account. Plus, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee if for some reason you're not happy. If that all sounds good to you, you can check out Surfshark through the link in my description and use coupon code Elena for an extra three months free. So this whole underside of the workbench, how I had it previously with just these open wooden bins, at first was working well, but I just noticed as I cut things or if I did anything up on the workbench that generated dust, it was all just coming down and covering everything in those open bins. And that's not gonna work. So I got all these wonderful Rubbermaid bins that actually fit perfectly, a set of six. And so what I'm gonna do is throw all my stuff that I wanna store under the workbench in here, and they'll be nice and covered and not get completely covered in dust and be a, a mess. But yeah, today I'm gonna to spend some time putting things in here and then just labeling them based on what is going in here. Random stuff that I don't access as much. Okay, so it's gonna be like this when it's popped up because the miter saw will be sitting there. It should be level with the top of the miter saw platform. And then it will fold down like that when it's not in use. Someone got on me in my last video about um, not using knee pads. Honestly, it's not a bad idea, so I'm trying to get in a better habit of at least kneeling on a, a towel or something. The stand was relatively straightforward and easy to construct. Maybe someday I'll build stands that are much fancier, but to be honest, I just need something that gets the job done, is easy to move, and helps me use my store of scrap wood, which this stand checks all the boxes for.
Got a piece of melamine left over from an epoxy pour and used that as the top of the collapsible table. These are the latches that will help us latch the um, miter saw stand to the workbench. Next up was attaching the latches. I attached one on each side using another piece of scrap to offset the slight width difference between the bench and the stand. These latches are rated for 660 pounds of hold capacity, so they're very secure. This is where I'm gonna store all my containers. Um, I actually have a friend who, he has a lot of these uh, Talenti ice creams and I asked him to save the containers and within like a month, he gave me five of these. <laughs> They're really nice for putting finishes in and um, just storing chemicals in general. So if any of my friends are watching this, Save your Talenti ice cream jars and send them to me, please. And I picked up these labels, so I'm gonna try to put all the same stuff in each bin and then label it as such so that it's easy to get to the things I need to get to. My scrap wood pile is continuing to get out of control and I do think I'll need to build a mobile storage cart soon, but for now I decided some tidying up would do because quite honestly, I was beat. I had used most of my 2x4s to build my workbench and power tool stands, so there was room to move some of the larger pieces up into the attic space. I had been saving these pallets and old desktop to use for making planner boxes for our backyard, but Kyle and I both realized we just don't have the time right now to tend to a garden, so I posted them on Facebook Marketplace to see if anyone else had use for them. Once those were gone, it freed up a bunch of space to store the table saw against the wall. Ugh. My quads hurt so bad from a rag yesterday.
The last little piece of my modular system was throwing a half inch piece of plywood on top of the workbench so that the top of the workbench would be the perfect height to support the wood for the miter saw and would make the drop a quarter inch down from the table saw top when that one was latched on. I had accounted for this extra piece of plywood on top of the workbench from the very beginning in all of my measurements. So it all came together perfectly. Some of you on my previous workshop update video had suggested putting spacers between the caster wheels and the bench to raise the height slightly. And honestly, this is a great option, but I like the idea of having a thinner top layer to my workbench serving as a sacrificial layer that can easily be replaced once it's super beat up. All right, I think that's gonna be it for today. Thanks for following along and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.